Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Gen Z Pro. Here with me I have Professor Shane Holbert. He teaches at the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology. Yes. He does photography yes. and he's here to speak a bit with me to speak a bit about his experience. Um, so I don't know, I just said a lot, but could you sure, introduce sure. yourself yeah. a little yeah, bit? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, so I am, uh, I, I, I work at RMIT, uh, I teach photography and I teach sort of photography, visual culture, focusing specifically on the technology side of photography, uh, in particular, uh, the practice and making of photographic images. I have been there for about 24 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, in addition to that, I also work uh, as a curator, uh, as an academic, of course, so I, I, I publish papers. Um, and then I, uh, and I also curate exhibitions and show my own work. Yeah. Yes, and I've seen a lot of your work online Ooh, okay. actually, and I realize a lot of them have to do with um, Australian in urban cities or the landscape. So could you tell mm. us a bit about your inspirations or your influences when it comes to like subjects or just even style? Sure. Um, I sort of began as a bit of a landscape photographer, a, a really common um, sort of genre within within um, sort of photography and its history. Um, but within that, I'm really interested in stories. I'm really interested in the stories that we tell ourselves about Australia. And then within those stories, how that sort of defines what we would sort of consider to be our cultural identity as a, as a nation and as, um, as a group of people. So I look for, I look for different sites and different locations in Australia that would um, represent that. And then I also like to, I guess, disrupt some of those stories. Mm -hmm. I think we, we tend, we as a nation, you know, sort of gen generally, we tend to sort of tell certain types of stories to push a particular narrative about what Australia is. Right. But sometimes those stories are just not right. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I quite like to find the stories, that, the sort of the hidden stories behind that, I guess, um, and then make work that, that critiques that story. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, for example, we've got this big river in Australia um, called, now called the, the, the Murray River. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and prior to that, it would have had lots and lots of different Indigenous names from the First Nations peoples in Australia before the, the British settlement. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting about that river is that it was originally um, the first sort of European to find it was a guy called Hamilton Hume, who was an explorer, mm -hmm. uh, and he was the first Australian-born explorer. So he's mm -hmm. the first, uh, first of those, that generation of explorers in the 1800s that was actually born in Australia. So he discovered the he sort of discovered the river. Um, and mapped it a bit of it and then another explorer came along and mapped a different part of the river and he was a british born explorer and then he named it the murray river after a british politician mm -hmm. so it should have been called the hume river mm -hmm. which is a, you know after the first australian born explorer which would have been you know kind of interesting but it wasn't so those sorts of little i find those kinds of little stories quite interesting and then the other thing i do is i find the way that Australia imports different cultural stories and the way that we export different cultural stories. And so I photograph um, parts of Australia overseas, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, there's a wonderful theme park in Shenzhen in China um, called mm -hmm. the Window of the World. I don't know. Yeah, no, 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 it's <laughs> this big theme park and, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's really quite funny because it just has all of these different um, different buildings that represent different parts of the world. Right. The White House from America. And, and, and so it's got the Sydney Opera House mm -hmm. and the Hub Bridge. But then behind that, it's got the Eiffel Tower, it's got the canals of Holland. So there's all these different ways that Australia is represented internationally in the kinds of stories that we tell. So I like to photograph that as well. Mm, wow, mm. very interesting, very <laughs> broad range. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah for sure. Um, next question I have for you <coughs> is, Oh, so you talked about, you know, um, the identity of Australia, mm. and that mm. was the theme that um, 
what was the overarching theme of your exhibition at uh, the festival oh, yes. UAE, right? Yeah. yeah. Could yeah. you talk a bit about that experience? How was it attending that festival like? Yeah, it was wonderful. That was a really great festival. Um, it's the Exposure Festival. I, I tend to, as a photographer, as an artist, um, there are a lot of photography festivals around the world. Mm -hmm. China has a good number of them. Uh, there's the Pingyao International Festival of Photography in Pingyao, um, which I show in quite regularly. Uh, and then um, there's wonderful festivals in the US and there's, you know, there's festivals and competitions all over the world. So um, it's quite, uh, there's lots of different opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was nominated for that festival um, by a, 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 another photographer in um, the UAE who knew my work. Um, and then the work, you know, people were nominated from all the different parts of the world and then each each nominee, uh, there was a male and a female representing each of the different continents, different areas. So I was the Oceania Australia one. Um, and that was the it was the import export work that I mm. that I was talking about. So I had images yes. of um, you know, sort of different um, sort of different uh, objects and landscapes in Australia that uh, have bought culture from overseas um, and then the reverse, you know, Australia represented overseas as well. So it was a great show. Um, mm -hmm. The festival was kind of interesting because, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes, um, sometimes it can be a bit raw. Um, no, what do you mean by that? Uh, a bit sort of low, a bit, um, you know, you've got to find your own way there. You've got to sort of find your own accommodation. Oh, and, yes. You know, it's a little sure. bit sort of, a bit like hacked a bit. Uh, or it's uh, like in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it's in the middle of nowhere. But then this one in, in Sharjah in the United Arab Emirates, they flew me over, they put me and my family in a beautiful five-star hotel, oh. fed us every day. It was amazing. It was one it was a really um, it was a really extraordinary festival, obviously that they had lots of money. Um, mm -hmm. but the work was really great, like seeing work from all over all, all around the world um, in that, you know, um, all the different regions was a really uh, it was a real it's a real highlight of being part of something like that, um, but then also to be able to see that work is really important. Right, and you won an mm. award at the I did, I did, I did. Well, yeah, yes, that won the Australian Oceania Award. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's um, pretty cool. Okay, next question I have for you is, Okay, many say we're entering the age of AI, and you know, with that comes a lot of um, you know, AI-generated images and mm. programs like Midjourney or Dolly. Mm. So, mm. And you know, there's a stigma, and also in general, there's a stigma against young people um, going into the arts. Uh, but in your opinion, why yeah. do you think it's so important for people to pursue art at an age like this and with you know stigmas like this? Yeah, that's a, such a good question because the answer is really connected. You know, mm -hmm. it's wonderful. It's a good question. Um, the idea of AI, artificial intelligence. You know, I, I think the concept of artificial intelligence is more of a you know. The marketers have got a hold of that somewhere, and mm -hmm. um, but definitely computational photography is really important. Where um, uh, and it's it can be really simple, even you know when you take a photo with your iPhone. There's a lot of algorithms going on behind the scenes to try and make those images look more vibrant or mm -hmm. sharper or whatever. Um, but then to make something up completely from text, that's pretty extraordinary. Photography. Look, I think the really important thing about photography is that even even before its its um, announcement, you know, it it was it it was and has always been really connected to the the, the highest levels of technology at the time. So mm -hmm. optics and chemistry in the in the eighteen hundreds, right through to electronics and then microprocessing and then computers. We had the we keep having revolutions, you know, the digital revolution, right. completely new ways of capturing and trans and capturing and, and transmitting images. And now we're in the middle of another revolution, which is, you know, the mining of the trillions of photographs that are currently on, you know, on the internet mm. to then be used to um, generate, you know, non, you know, images that have been formed without a lens, so to speak. Uh, so I think that's quite revolutionary and I think it's going to really change, is it, I mean, it's revolutionary most definitely, it's very early days. Mm -hmm. um, it is going to radically shift the industry of photography, um, you know, photographers make a lot of money doing product shoots and commercial work and I think now, you know, 
there'll be a new type of photography where you know it's like the ad bit but the agency or the art director is just going to sit there and type in prompts get the image and that's it so that'll be interesting but the reason why you would study art now is really simple um it is because uh as computers are becoming increasingly more intelligent mm -hmm. they are able to very quickly rapidly solve uh, find answers uh, to, to problems if those answers already exist. Mm -hmm. So if you're in accounting, I will never be an accountant now, you know, for example, um, because accounting software is solving all these problems, right? Because the answer already is, it's tax code, right? Um, but if the problem, if the solution to a problem is not known, if it doesn't exist, then it requires creative insights and it requires a form of creative, you know, creative expression or the ability to solve these problems. And computers can't do that yet. Maybe, maybe in one day, but at the moment, the problem needs to exist in order for a computer to solve it. Sorry, the answer right, needs right. to exist for a computer to solve it. Without that answer, someone needs to create the answer. So creativity is really important. Right, yeah. and I've heard that you know, when it comes to creativity, there's not really much sometimes most of the time there's not really much of a logic to it you have to make these jumps and that's sure. something that computers can't do not, no, at present. no 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 not at all mm -hmm. and um but we're also humans you know and humans absolutely thrive on culture and creativity and have mm -hmm. done for you know five seven twelve thousand years you know it's 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 in it's who we are and um to not be able to create to live in a culture and a society that does not have at its core um, a sense of creativity uh, and, and expression and culture, I mean, you may as well be a computer, you know, because there's no life there without yeah. that. Yeah. I guess that is, that is the <coughs> answer. Um, mm. Okay, next question I have for you is, what do you think your goals are as an artist and photographer? What are my goals as an artist and a photographer? I like to share things, I like to share ideas, I like to make work. Um, I like to exhibit my work and I like to uh, exhibit the work of other artists and photographers. Um, I think the goal of oh my, you know, the goal of artists in general is to contribute to culture and society. Mm. That, that's what that's why we do what we do. Um, that's that's the reason why we make work. Uh, that's the reason why we like to, to, to sort of show it and to um, tell those stories and to connect with people. So I think my goal would be to to retire having left a legacy of work that other generations are able to see and enjoy. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I see. Yeah. And okay, this is a question. It's the last question. Sure. I always ask my guests this: <laughs> uh, if you had to give your best piece of advice to Gen Z, so that's my generation. Sure, sure. Yep. Uh, yep. What would you say? My best piece of advice. Oh my. <laughs> That's such a funny question. It's such a fun yeah, question, isn't difficult. it? Um, I don't think there would be any one singular piece of advice. Um, I think remembering back to what I was like when I was finishing secondary school, for example, 18, around that age, um, I thought I had, I thought I just had all this time, you know, but you actually don't, you know. You, and so I think... Um, I think that just don't wait around and do just well, don't wait around for things to happen. You know, you have to kind of make your life. You have to design your own life. You know, um, because that's where that's where experience will come from. That's where knowledge will come from, and that's that's how you will find meaningful enjoyment in life. Um, I think if you wait around for, to, for things to happen, uh, you'll end up in a job that you don't like. Um, you'll end up not having access and the accessibility and the means to do the things that you want to do. Um, so yeah, I think just don't wait around, just get on with it. Yeah, no, that's great <laughs> advice. Um, life, I had this quote, life doesn't come at you, it comes from you. Very right? good, yes, yeah. there you go. That's my <laughs> advice, that's it, take that one. Okay, well that is the end of our interview. Thank you so You're much to, to mm. talking with me today. Mm. Excellent conversation. Thank you. Thank you.